Welcome back to another episode of Sound Powers to Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and today I'll be reviewing the movie Goodfellas. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. The story of Henry Hill and his life in the Mafia, covering his relationship with his wife Karen and his mob partners Jimmy Conway and Tommy DeVito. So let's begin with my first prep. We got none other than Martin Scorsese as the director for this film, and I gotta say, he does have a way of reading stories, and in his mind, he's already framing the shot and going over small details of a film. So for him to seek out the book and want to make it into a movie means he is already thinking and running things through his head. Next pro. The film is based on the book Wise Guy by Nicholas Pileggi based on the life of Henry Hill who was born in 1943 and died in 2012. When Martin Scorsese found out about the book he called the author and told him he's been waiting for this his whole life and the author responded by saying he's been waiting for this call his whole life as well. So to say that the story told in the film translates well into film is putting it lightly. I can reference so many scenes that have become iconic like the steady cam shots, the stage design, the opening with the red tent over it, all the beatings and how it truly made you feel fear towards the mobsters. And yes, even the how am I funny scene. Next pro, the film was authentic, but how you may ask? Well, they had actual real gangsters in the film playing extras to make it more authentic. And how did they work that into the movie without the feds finding out? Well, they simply gave fake names and social security numbers, but somehow they still got paid. But by having them on set means that they actually put an input and say, yeah, this is how we did it or this is how it would have been done and that this is feels authentic but there was one more person in it that you wouldn't expect and that's the real agent that took Henry into the witness protection program Edward McDonald playing himself in the film that is so sneaky that they did this because I am sure Martin Scorsese before and after the scene was asking him more questions about the book and how accurate it was in certain information if you were the agent would you have stayed silent or would you have given him everything he asked for also like the scene where Tommy shot Spider in the foot and next when spider tells tommy to f off and tommy shoots him according to henry that did happen and even polly would be known to get violent he recalls polly beating a woman with a baseball bat for telling polly's wife that he was cheating on her so what we saw is authentic i would go as far as to say we saw a lighter version of the real stuff that actually happened next pro the cast and the impact it left on pop culture we have robert de niro ray liotta joe pesci paul sorbiano frank Sivero, mike star frank vicente Samuel L. Jackson and even Martin Scorsese's father Charles Scorsese in the film as an actor and also as an assistant director. But it's not just the big names that made the film, it was all the lines and scenes that stood out. It's how blunt they were with the actual violence, they didn't sugarcoat it, they showed people getting beat up, robbed, stabbed, shot, this brought fear into the viewers and the real people in the city at that time. So this is how they kept control. So this film shows it for what it was but also we get the scenes that made it into the pop culture. We have The Simpsons with the the mob characters Louie who looks like Frankie Carbone, Fat Tony is Paul Cicero, then you got Swingers the movie talking about Goodfellas and praising it, then you got the show The Sopranos that even said that Goodfellas was like their bible. But what made it into children's cartoon was the infamous Goodfeathers in the Animaniacs where they were three pigeons in short skits that would always begin with as far back as I can remember voiceover by one of them based off Ray Liotta's character and the other two Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci's characters. But what made it more funny was how the how am I funny skit would always come up in every single episode and when I saw that as a kid before I saw the movie I didn't know where it was from but it made me laugh. Next pro let's talk about the how am I funny scene. Did the real Tommy or Thomas De Simone really do this? Well he was unstable and hot headed that he did go off sometimes but the scene was actually based on something that happened to Joe Pesci as a young kid working in a restaurant. He told a mobster who was eating there he was funny. The mobster apparently didn't like it and asked how am I funny. Joe Pesci says he was scared for his life until others de-escalated the situation but he told Martin Scorsese about this and it ended up in the film. But this makes you feel how Henry would have felt every day being careful of what he said and how he said it and around who he said it and how others would take it. It was a difference between them liking you or killing you. And now on to my cons. I gotta say the only con I would find or actually see that there were some inconsistencies with the scenes were that they went back and forth between the characters. For example the scene where Tommy shoot spider we can see spider walking back when he gets shot and in between there are two shots that pan back and forth and it seems like they use the same shot but from a different angle or a different camera so it looks like spider is falling back twice go watch it again and see what you think also in the first instance when tommy shoots spider in the foot we see henry get up to go help spider but after frankie says nice effing game we see henry come back to his seat then after tommy says let him crawl back we see henry and two other guys helping spider but after 
after we see a shot of the table with everyone's face in the light, but the only one facing away is Henry. Even if we don't see him in the light, we can make out his silhouette of his face and his combed hairstyle. Also the scene where Frankie and Tommy go kill Stax, we see Tommy shoot him from the back and Stax falls forward onto the bed. We hear three shots and then Tommy walks out towards Frankie in the kitchen. But then we see a flashback where Tommy is seen standing by the door facing the bed shooting five times versus three times as the last scene. There are other scenes that are inconsistent in the film that you can go back and try to spot. But hey, this might have been a choice that the director or editor picked. So who am I to judge? Still, the movie is what it is. Last con. I don't know how to feel about the ending when we see Henry walk out of his house to get the paper and he says that now he has to live like a smuck. Then we transition to a shot of Tommy firing the gun towards the camera, then back to Henry. I don't know what this is supposed to mean. Is it supposed to say something like Henry watch your back or is this him remembering how he lived and now that that's gone? I could have ended it with him in the courthouse walking towards the camera and telling us that they did stuff and now it's all gone. And right there, that could have been the ending. So my grade for this movie is going to be an 8.5 out of 10. There are some editing inaccuracies and I don't know how to feel about the ending where Tommy is shooting the, towards the camera, but I gotta say the story is there, keeps you glued, created so many pop culture references, amazing cast, big names, based on real events 90% or more accurate, even so that real mobsters were extras in the film, and even real federal agent Eric McDonald was in it as himself. Martin Gorsese shot the film very well and it gives you the feel of how it would have been to be inside the mob. Yes, scared but still in with them. This is based on a book which I recommend you try to read or seek out, but this film is one of those that you can rewatch every few years like I do. So that does it for this review of Goodfellas. Please join us next time where we're going to review Singing in the Rain. Elena, you're a beautiful woman. Audiences think you've got a voice to match. The studio's got to keep their stars from looking ridiculous at any cost. No one's got that much money. What's wrong with the way I talk? What's the big idea? Am I dumb or something? Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.